So we're here again, drifting in the quiet of space, very gently performing surgery on a torpedo. Um, we ended the last stream with, uh, I believe, three of us outside. I believe it's Chester, Carter, and Rebecca are all floating outside. And Chester and is is doing his best to stay out of the way. Carter is acting as a tripod holding the torpedo, and Rebecca is doing all of the real work. First off, I do want to mention that uh, Scarlet, who plays Carter, is not going to be here today. He has a family obligation, but told us to just go ahead without him. So uh, there's going to be minimal Carter interaction today. <laughs> we'll be moving him around, and if he has to be interacted with, um, well, it, it, we'll probably just send him to his room to think about what he's done or something. Um, but yeah, and then I think the last thing that's really started to happen was, uh, what's his passenger face? Who's been asleep for the last, like, ten episodes. Mm -hmm. Twelve episodes. Is starting to wake up. And we also don't know if anyone saw the, uh, rather enthusiastic exchange of torpedoes and PDC fire mm -hmm. that has recently graced the region with its beautiful fireworky presence. Yeah, not, not to mention a ship's, you know, reactor going poof. Uh, yeah, man, it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. Especially out in the belt, you know, those belters just don't know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And here's Nab coming in. She put the baby to sleep. So once she's in, I think we can go ahead and get started. Um, while she's logging in, I do want to, again, as we always do, thank Green Ronin for allowing us to use their beautiful art and these maps on our stream. Uh, if you're curious about the system, type in ex exclamation point expanse in the chat and it will take you right to the Green Ronin Expanse Age collection on their website. They actually just released a new adventure last night or maybe this morning. Um, yep, that's it, Screeny. Uh, I believe, I believe it's like a, it's like a short, like, four-page adventure or something like that. But it's really cool, because it's definitely a living system, and they keep on releasing little things here, uh, here and there. But it's, it's cool stuff. Worth it just for the art. 100%. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, you can see some of the art in the lower right-hand corner. Sorry, lower left-hand corner of the screen. Everything you see there, except for a couple character pictures, is art. Like, that one is... That's a character generator art, but the stuff in the background there is actually art from the book. Uh, and the, the book art is, is amazing. But yeah. So I think, Nab, if you are in... I think I'm in, yeah. You are in. I think we are ready to go. Shake our fists and defy the stars. So, I'm floating in space. Mm hmm. There's a guts of a torpedo. I think has the, the uh, majority of the work, like extraction, has been done. Uh, of getting the parts that you want out um, as the auto dock relay uh, that, that Chester carries with him started to give him the alert that your uh, uh, long term patient is starting to wake up I believe June was sitting with him right? yes I'm in mm -hmm. the room mm -hmm. um, okay well as that, as that alert goes off and, and all that stuff Chester's going to think about what his skills are, what he's useful at, and he's going to come in. June, do you want me to come in there and help you with him waking up and make sure he doesn't bang his head or anything? Uh, she kind of starts awake at the at the voice and goes, "Um, sure. If you wanna, if you wanna come in, you can." That sounds. It's. It looks like he's gonna come to consciousness soon. So he's um, stirring. Yes. So, Rebecca, if, if you don't need any help, 
other than Chester out here. I imagine, or not Chester, Carter out here. I imagine Carter just makes some sort of belter sign that Chester assumes is respectful, but definitely isn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chester's going to make his way back to the airlock. Rebecca just continues to work. Uh, now, I believe, just to refresh my memory, the plan was that you've got the like guidance and communication stuff off of a torpedo extracted. Um, yeah. And the plan was to then hook that to your cobbled together drone uh, that may or may not be learning things. Um, I mean, or, knows how to play adapting. chess. Yes. Um, and okay. just see what just it does with that information. See. Yeah, I believe that's the. I believe that was the plan. Okay. Which is definitely not a bad plan. That was easier than trying to uh, roll out an entire torpedo and plug this thing in. Um, Probably less dangerous. Just extract too. the pieces that that you need from one. Yes. Okay. Well, while that's going on, I'm going to start making my way up the ladder on the float. I'll move into the the room here if nothing else happens. Nope, nothing nothing would have started yet. Uh, it would have given you enough of a, a warning to kind of get in, uh, get out of your suit uh, as as you need to. Uh, what else is, is everybody else up to? Uh, Rebecca is going to continue to work, but we have Thomas and Nigel. Uh, Thomas is probably just going to hop up to the flight deck and just keep an eye on the scanners and keep uh, the guys outside. Okay. Nothing to what's it, but just, uh, if, you know, be, be where he is probably going to be most useful if the proverbial hits the fan. Gotcha. Yep. Easy enough to do. Nigel would be waiting for this uh, equipment to start thinking about how to connect it to the... Uh, either to the drone or to the actual data core. Okay. Uh, now, are you wanting to take the the core outside, or is Rebecca being asked to bring things inside to hook it up? I know I part of the put... rationale behind the plan was to have it outside, so if you needed, like, if it goes nuts, you can just, eh, we're leaving, um, and just let it do its thing, but... Yeah, so I think in this scenario... Um... Knowledge would be waiting to go outside when everybody is ready uh, with all the parts. So okay. I would assume that Nigel would be heading up to get ready to do that. Okay, uh, that's easy enough to do. Uh, so then June and uh, uh, Chester, you're you're in the the med bay, uh, and it, by the time you get in and uh, uh, get there, uh, you can tell that like the auto dock has also told you it's completely stepped away. He's just kind of naturally waking up. Um, there, that you would be able to, um, oh, I don't know, the, some sort of like smelling salts or something if you wanted to try to accelerate the process, that would be up to you. Uh, but the, the auto dock would be letting you know that the patient is as, um, as healthy as it can make it. Okay. So June is watching him stir and she's picking up on the readings that are there and she starts gently singing an earth lullaby okay Chester kind of starts when she starts singing and then rummages in his pocket and goes to the water dispenser in the room which I'm assuming all the quarters have like a little spigot for water and mixes like a little electrolyte drink from his uh, his med kit and mixes it in a in a bulb for the, the patient when he wakes up so that he's got something to drink that's going to make him feel a little bit better after being flat and flattened yeah. for so long. <laughs> yes, the, like I say, the autodoc would probably be telling you that, you know, and your own experience for somebody that, that's been laid up like this, this long, uh, is is that there's going to be some recovery after the autodoc clears the, the internal injuries, but there's not anything the autodoc can do, this autodoc can do about that. Right. Um, after, uh, oh, I'd say five or 10 minutes or so, of you can tell he's kind of more naturally uh, you know, stirring and and uh, waking up, he sort of, of uh, will. It's it's not an overly dramatic like he starts up straight in bed, but he kind of rolls over, 
and I think do we have him restrained still? Like, like, not like you can't move, but like he's belted to the bed because we're in zero G, so he doesn't drift around. Yeah, we mm. never, okay. we never did uh, say that we took him out of that. No. So, okay, like, he fine. he'll be able to undo the straps. It's not like he's restrained, restrained because we're right. in here, but yep. he's he's secured. Which and that that also wouldn't be an unusual thing just for somebody like kind of uh, just sleeping when you're yeah. when you're floating. Uh, so anybody that's used to being out on the float and out in zero G waking up feeling somewhat restrained like that wouldn't be unusual. Um, but, but he, uh, uh will we'll wake up and y- you can tell he's taking a little bit to focus. His mind's still pretty fu- uh, fuzzy. Um, Every once in a while now, June will replace a word in the lullaby with K. Oh, right. That's his name. Uh, it, are his eyes open? I, I'd say at this point that they are. Um, and you'd recognize that he the, the eyes are open and he's mentally trying to get his bearings. Um still kind of coming out of the, the, the fog of being out for that long. Uh, with not not super loud so as not to startle him, Chester's just going to be like, how are you feeling? You've been under for quite some time. It's been, what, like five or six days or something like that, I want to say? Uh, that sounds about right. <laughs> been, been out for, for several days. You took... Uh, he took some nasty hits. Bump on the head. It's... Do, do you know your name? June just kind of like side-eyes him and finishes her verse and then stands up and gets a little bit close to to Kay. So at least he can focus on a person. What, where, where, where am I? You're What's... on a ship. We found you here. I think these, this room should look familiar. I think this is, we actually found you in here. You were, uh, you were pretty low on oxygen. You can see he kind of shakes his head a little bit uh, as he's still trying to kind of shake the, the cobwebs away. What? Are drones? What What happened? The drones are gone. We're we... not sure exactly what happened to you and your crew, but we found yep. the drones. <laughs> they found us, one or the other, but we took care of the drones. June took care of them very well, actually. She. Anyway. June makes some finger guns and then blows the fingertip. Uh. So. Not to freak you out too much. But this is our ship now. We, uh, we filed a salvage claim on it. And we were wondering where your people are so we can take you back to them. Because you're the only survivor of anybody who was on the ship. In... You can pretty much drop me anywhere I can get work, I guess. Uh, like, you, you can... June especially, you could tell he's... Kai is now a little... Um, sort of dropped into... Not not like a full defensive, but a more guarded. He's trying to get the lay of the the land where he's at now, um, and he he knows he doesn't have a lot of information, but you know it's it's that sort of hmm. Um, he he's very well aware of how vulnerable he is uh, at this point in time. Sure. Um, so and she suspected this right, which is why when he when (laughs) when Chester was asking all of those questions as soon as this guy was waking up she's like "Uh." (laughs) Um, Chester's going full military medic here (laughs) who are are you what do you want (laughs) 
but um june june just kind of um she she keeps a respectful distance but she's close enough that it's uh it's friendly it's not intimidating Mm -hmm. um but it's but again a respectful distance um and she says um i i wanted to make sure that we could try and figure out a little bit about you is your name k that's that's me wonderful at least we got something right um and she gives him like a half smile just a, one of those like charming ah at least we can you know we can have something in common or or something um and she um she just kind of gestures um and says this is chester i'm june um we have a couple other crewmates that i'm sure you'll be able to to meet soon um we're from all over uh where are you from mars initially but recently just sort of and and he kind of gives a shrug the just kind of wherever just okay. kind of just kind of nods like i know how that feels I can take that off your arm if you want. And he's gesturing at the auto dock. It's it's not doing anything anymore. You're all. You you will now proceed with your life functions normally. Sounds good, I guess. Um, Chester starts taking it off. He just didn't want to reach out and like start tugging on him without right. telling him he's going to do anything. So it's pulling it off. It's kind of wiping it down and looking looking over, making sure he takes stock of what it's going to need the next time we stop somewhere and kind of making note of what's low and what what is still okay. Uh, and and Kai, as you do that, Kai goes, like, reaches to basically start undoing the, the straps that had kind of hold, been holding him in the bed at zero G. And then he, he like, he stops before he actually does uh, and looks over um very much asking the like am I allowed to basically asking without asking if he's a prisoner um kind of thing is it Kai or K uh K- K-A-I uh it'd be okay uh, so Kai yeah so initially when you had first told us his name it was K and so now oh. I, I will re I will reprogram <laughs> my apologies I'm not okay. great with the I was, no worries I, I see names. I'm like, oh, hey, that sounds cool. I think that's how that's pronounced. And then I proceed <laughs> okay. to mispronounce it all over the place. It's okay. Uh, with people that actually know <laughs> what they're talking about. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so she, uh, June, recognizes the the defensiveness as you know, as you mentioned, and she goes, "We are not interested in um, in prisoners." You, as, as long as you don't hold a threat to us, we don't mean to hold a threat to you. Uh, we're just curious because there sure were threats when we got on this ship. And there have been a couple of threats to our lives after we got on this ship. And so if you happen to know uh, of anything pertaining to why somebody might want to threaten us, we would be quite interested in that information. But we have no reason to hurt you, or nor do we want to, um, if you don't mean any harm to us. I'm so glad that... Uh, what's his name? Thomas isn't in here. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what I can, but I don't know how much help I'm going to be. I was just brought on as, as crew. Were you just, just for a single job kind of thing? Chester just goes uh, ahead and, and unbuckles the, the straps for him so he doesn't have to question anymore and just lets him float free. Uh, he he sort of and you could tell from his movements at this point that this is somebody that is used to being in in zero g uh he's still very stiff stiff and you can tell that he's moving slowly because of of you know being in bed for al- almost a week uh but he does have the uh the feel of somebody that is used to being in zero g kind of gets himself rotated around 
uh, instinctually kind of grabbing a hold of the, the handholds uh, that would be built in around the bunk. Um, I mean, it was kind of a short-term thing, just as long as I was, you know, if I wanted the work, they were paying me. But, uh, uh, I mean, I kind of figured that there was some shady happening, but not terribly unusual. So you don't... This size. Do you know what they were paying you for on this particular run? I, I was just crew. Boxes over there, move boxes over here. You know, change air filters. You know, I just... You an engineer? I mean, not really, but doesn't exactly take an engineer to change an air filter. Fair so enough. a deckhand. A deckhand, I suppose. Um... Were you aware of what were in the boxes you were told to move here and there and everywhere? Not specifically. Does Chester believe him? Um, I guess let's find out. What would that be? Intuition, probably. Perception. Uh-huh. Um, I was about to say if I could roll that, too. Yeah, that, that's fine. The perception. Okay, sixteen and eighteen. You're both aware that Kai is. He likely knows more than he's said. But you're both also aware that if situations were reversed, you probably wouldn't be spilling your guts about any illegal activities you may have been involved in or semi-illegal activities. Um, I guess I guess what yeah. I'm kind of kind of looking for, not necessarily, you know, I believe him, but also just like, do I get like a any kind of vibe? Like, is this guy somebody who might try to take a ship back kind of thing is with that role? Like, is, is he harboring uh, perhaps thoughts of vengeance or retribution against people that may have taken the ship he was on out from under him? Yeah, I'm thinking reading tone, trying to intuit what you know, his I don't, I'm not future... Liking, I'm not asking for magic mind reading. I'm just trying to right. get a yep. feel. Um, 16, that's a pretty good one. Chester, you can tell, as stated before, that Kai definitely knows the vulnerable position he's in. Uh, and if there would be any hostile intent or trying to take the ship back or anything like that, he's smart enough to wait till he knows more would be the vibe that you're getting. Okay. Um because he's met you two and you've referred to other members of the crew so he already knows that he'd be outnumbered um plus june could convince him just to throw himself out an airlock anyway not that he knows that yet <laughs> but possible um and yeah so there's nothing active like in the next five minutes he's gonna try to figure out how to hijack the ship um so you don't really on that front you don't have anything one way or the other uh, other than the fact you can tell he's smart enough to realize the situation that he's okay. in. Um, All right. Okay. And the, so... the, e even as the cobwebs have, have gone away, this individual is not stupid. Um, and the, the, the brain is working and attempting to figure out what's going on. Okay, I do want to I do want to point out that I am an expert in attractiveness, and so mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he, uh, my presence. If an NPC could be attracted to you, their initial attitude is one step more favorable towards you. Okay. I don't know if that will affect how he sees June or trusts her. But I want to put that in there. And that's just novice expert um, in is like I can perform a flirt stunt if I want to <laughs> for less cost. Um, but 
The target of your efforts can have a neutral attitude instead of open, and I don't remember attitudes and the we'll hierarchy to, we'll of that, that but... But yeah. So, um, he may... He may be more favorable to June than he is to Chester, just because of that. I mean, that's I probably most that humans. <laughs> I mean, Chester's maybe. a weirdo. <laughs> but this is in the game, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and let's see, I have to check something else. Um, uh, so let's see, the, the question was, did he know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, what was in the boxes wasn't always what was labeled, but again, that's not really. Not your you know, job, right? Yeah. Yeah. And asking questions is a real quick way to best case not have work anymore that's fair i i haven't worked much on the smaller ships so this is my probably my first time as a civilian on a ship this size chester kind of smiles what'd you do during your time if you're from mars oh just a couple of different ships uh nothing you know outstanding certainly didn't make a name for myself or anything. June just chuckles in a friendly, teasing way and says, I wondered because I never heard of you. And she she looks at Chester and she goes, you have a drink for him, right? Oh, yeah. He looks out of the bulb. Here, this is uh, it's an electrolyte beverage. It's uh, I mean, it's lime. Eh, it's it's like the Mars ones we got for when after workouts. I like the lime ones. I don't know if you do, but uh, this should help, you know, with dry mouth. And then if you're, you know, you've been, we've been feeding you intravenously, but if you're feeling like you need something else in your stomach, I mean, you're welcome to come up with us to the galley. Got a, got a few things yeah. we can give to you. June smiles and says, in those boxes we have talked about, you had food. Yes. There's less now. Uh, he, he takes the, the drink bulb. Um... And you can tell there's a moment where he's stopping to think what might be in this thing, but then he's also, if you guys wanted to hurt him or drug him, you wouldn't have had to have been sneaky and underhanded, you know, to do it that way. Uh, you had ample <laughs> opportunity to do anything you wanted. Um, yeah, yeah, and June, so, but June there's catches. a definite pause. June and catches then, the pause and looking even before he gets to it and just says, we'd have killed you if we wanted to. Chester, like, looks at June startled. She just says it with, you know, clear and gives him, gives him, like, a wink. And, <laughs> and doesn't say anything else. I wouldn't have killed you. Suppose you're right. And, like, he goes to, to, to drink it. Uh, and you can tell kind of like that first one sort of swishing around a little bit, getting cotton mouth dealt with, um, and then, you know, proceeds to relatively quickly down the rest of it. Um, so yeah, if you, uh, if you want to grab something to eat, we can head up to the galley. I'll call, uh, I can call, well, some of our crew members are busy right now, but I can call the people who I don't think are, have them meet you as well. And we'll figure out where we're gonna where, where we're gonna drop you. We're currently, uh, I think our next stop's gonna be Ganymede. So if that's amenable to you, we can put you off there. Or if there's somewhere else that you'd rather be. I mean, I can Ganymede works well, as well as just about anywhere else. Um, yes, no time like the present to get back on my feet, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I figured... I know, personally, if I'd been in bed for several days, I'd first thing I'd want to do is get up out of the bed. You're probably a little stiff, you know, just take things slow. You know, do some stretches and things. I don't know if you've ever been laid up for a long time before, but... I was a... By the way, the reason I'm talking, telling you what to do, I, I was a medic in the MCRN, so I, I... This is kind of like routine for me, helping people get back on their feet after an injury or something from a training accident or even some minor combat wounds. Um, but yeah, so if you, if you feel funny or anything, let me know. We can see if we can do anything for you. But according to the auto doc, you're ship shape, just a little 
a little, uh, little stiff from being unmoving for a while, so best cure to that is to get moving, even if it kind of hurts a little bit. Chester smiles and then, like, starts twisting and stretching his back a little bit because he also gets twisty and stiff when he's been exposed to high G, which he has been recently, and he, like, like starts getting distracted trying to pop his back and starts ignoring everyone else in the room. June just kind of watches him, shakes her head slightly, and goes, I would say give yourself a good shake, but we're not in gravity in any in any way, shape, or form right now, so probably a bad idea. You hear a loud oh. pop from the vicinity of uh, Chester's lower spine. <sighs> oh, jeez. <laughs> June, um, June just kind of shrugs and, and says, so, yeah, if you want to come up to the galley, um, you know the way. If you don't mind, I think I will go up the ladder behind everybody else. And she just kind of like looks down at her outfit. Are you wearing one of your skirts not, with shorts again? Not necessarily a dress. This one is more form fitting uh, so that it's not all over the place. But she. You don't uh, want him looking at your butt. No. It's like, think skort, I guess. Do you know what a skort is? I think so, yes. It looks like shorts, but it's got... It's short. Well, it's shorts with, like, a skirt that overlays it. It's, okay. Yeah. Uh, um, and, like, I'd say th this is probably the point where Kai actually sort of steps back to take in the the figure that is June. Um, <laughs> She's a lot. I, um, Maybe takes in her figure a couple times. <laughs> Probably. Yes. I'm I'm like um, I'm, I am <laughs> I'm fighting with myself right now because June would in some instances pick up on that and just do a turn. <laughs> um but I don't think she's going to this time. <laughs> she's just going to let him look act like she doesn't notice. The, the, there's a moment where, like, you can tell Kai is trying to process, uh, but the words aren't making it from the brain to the mouth, and he has to, like, consciously close his mouth. Um, I guess before I get up and around too much, a shower would be great. Um, I wondered about probably that. Probably have. I should have a spare jumpsuit somewhere. Um, yeah, we didn't go through your stuff really much in here. Everything that was in here is... Oh, uh, he had a terminal on him, right? We we had yes. his terminal. June, do you yeah. still have his terminal? I do. And she goes over to the bunk. I put it back in here, and she she rifles through, and she picks it up. She goes, this is yours. We kept it for you. I appreciate that he'd take it, uh, and, and kind of tuck it away in the, you know, the standard terminal pocket um, would have been where you found it. Okay, well, uh, mm. we'll let you get cleaned up, I guess. Uh, yeah, do you want to eat first or do you want to shower first? I'm sorry. I mean, a shower would be great. Yeah, okay. And Chester just gets up and then, like, floats over June and, <laughs> and Kai out into the main area just because he's like, okay, time to leave. <laughs> June, June watches him float over and go, and when he reaches the door and goes out, she goes, five points. <laughs> she turns back uh, to Kai and says, okay, um, you know your way around the ship. We're probably going to be up in the galley. Uh, we'll see you when you're done, I guess. And she, she gives him like a pretend salute. Um, and she goes out that she floats out the door and just says, glad you're alive and closes it behind her. So the shower, I believe he has to come out and go into the shower here, right? Yeah, I, that's my assumption is that's kind of an all in one sort like of like the toilet folds in and then yeah. he can spray himself <laughs> and then there's a blow, yeah. like a blow dryer from the floor. <laughs> yeah, but I, I would assume that whatever anyway. <laughs> the the water usage is is that it's it's kept minimal. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I don't think the expanse has anything like a sonic shower. But, no, it's I believe um, it's all it's all liquid. 
And actually, yeah. so interestingly enough, in space, typically it's a sponge bath because water just gets everywhere. Yep. Yeah, it, it bubbles. <laughs> but I think they would call it a shower either way. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Chester's just going to go what, up. One and, of those terms that hangs out, even if the actual practice is a little bit different than what we would mm-hmm. consider. Well, I imagine that under thrust it works like a regular shower, but... Yeah. Uh, so Chester, Chester's going to start heading up and he's going to pause, kind of turn down with his head through the thing back to June, who's behind him. He's like, do you want to just like keep an eye? Do you want me to keep an eye? I was going to go get some food started, but you can do it if you want. I. It's June, June cuts him off because she knows this about Chester now <laughs> and goes, it's okay. Um, you go ahead... I don't know about you, um, but I want to kind of keep an eye on this guy for a little while. Yeah, I was thinking that might that might be best. Uh, do, do you want any requests? I was just going to make food for everybody. I figure, I mean, I haven't eaten since before the excitement, so. Uh, she looks at the door and then she kind of half smiles and she goes, I'm feeling noodles. Okay. I like noodles. I can do noodles. He he just goes up. Yeah, she just remembers that he has a noodle subscription. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, He's trying to think of his whether he wants to use his favorite noodles or share his least favorite noodles. (laughs) (laughs) Um. So June doesn't want to be like obviously right in the way of where he would be going to the shower. (laughs) She's just draped all over the shower door. Where are you going, big boy? Anyway. <laughs> you come here often? Yeah. <laughs> I live here. <laughs> um, so June is just kind of, she's not, because she doesn't want to make it obvious that she's keeping an eye on him either. Um, and so she's going to go up the ladder and just kind of be near the ladder up one level and just kind of listen for him at this point. And then when she can hear that he has come back out of the shower and back into her his room, she'll make her way back down there. Gotcha. Uh, it's it's a uh, keep your distance, but don't look like you're keeping your distance. You know, yeah. Fly casual. Fly casual. Sort of <laughs> fly casual. Um, yeah. Uh, so I would say after uh, a bit, uh, you would hear the door open uh, to his room uh, and if you were kind of surreptitiously keeping an eye down, you'd see, like, he's got an extra jumpsuit and uh, uh, a towel, you know, but what you would expect somebody to be carrying if they were going to go in and, and take a shower uh, or, or bathe themselves. Um, uh, and then, you know, goes goes in, you'd hear the, the sounds of somebody you know, going through their, their basic routine. Uh, and a little while later that he comes back out, kind of floats out and heads back to the, uh, his room to, you know, put stuff away. Um, okay. During that time, are Thomas or Nigel or anybody else doing anything? Cause I'm sure that takes a while. Chester's yeah, making noodles. Bit. He's occupied the whole time. <laughs> Sansa's occupied. We'll be for some time. <laughs> Uh, Thomas is just as his feet up watching scanners. Um, <coughs> not there. You know, just carrying on as he was. Uh, and then, Although, Nigel, um, like, do you have all of the. Like, what what all do you have with you as you're prepping to head outside? Um, like, how, how much of the remains of the science experiment that was the data core and the drone is still on the. Uh, the table well so I think it's important to note that during this conversation that that everyone was having with Kay was that at some point Nigel drug the remains of a drone chessboard and various servos and cables and things down the ladder shoot all the way down to the, the airlock level and you probably have about six meters of cables just being drugged down the, <laughs> the, the, the flyway and uh, has been shoved into unceremoniously into the airlock as Nigel gets ready to head outside. 
I'm imagining like the space jellyfish of cables and servos. Okay, with a still twitching drone. <laughs> <laughs> Desperately trying to make the next move on the chessboard. <laughs> so was, yeah. that was while we were in the room with him? Where it probably would have passed by as you were oh uh, working your way out. <laughs> okay. Well, so th uh, there, there probably was a pause then as as he was headed from his room to the uh, the the head to uh, like just look at these cables uh, that are strung through um, before proceeding with what he's doing. But the the bulk of the equipment at that point would have been, you know, down with you. Yes, good um, because yeah. June did not want to run interference after saying the drones were gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, there's not much of the drone left at this sure, point. Sure, but there's a jellyfished drone <laughs> down. I feel like I feel like if there was any post-traumatic stress disorder, that would trigger it. <laughs> uh, drones are gone. Ah! <laughs> it's back. <laughs> uh, can we get a token put out for oh, Kai uh, so we yes. know where he is when we know Just where a he second. is? It's for everyone there. So yeah, he'd be uh, back back in his room, you know, putting stuff up, uh, and then a little bit after that, the door would open again. Um, very obviously not looking at the, the squid of cables going back and forth uh, and making his way uh, up. Uh, Nab just stepped away to go grab a drink of water, oh. I think. Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know if I like like super high intensity combat or just talking awkwardly with a person who doesn't know what's going on more because both are hilarious to me. The, that and that's that's what I love about the game is you kind of get to do both. Yeah, um, you can have have those moments, and you, I I like some of the social aspect of stuff, and then every once in a while you just need to shoot things. Yeah, like, exactly. Combat is fun, like like um, doors. Yes. <laughs> um. So, and the the fact that a a ten second you know spat of combat can take two and a half, three, four hours to, to run through um, is is also kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd say somewhere in here, uh, Nigel, you would be informed by Rebecca that she would be ready. Um, so but basically asking the question if you wanted things brought inside or if you were ready to head outside. All right, and at that point, Nigel would have called back and Belter Creole, saying that he had a, he's heading up the airlock after pulling all of the tentacles down the uh, mm -hmm. flyway all, all the way into the airlock uh, and grabbing a portable screen from the chessboard as well as a few other bits and pieces in the ship. Yep. At that point, Nigel would open up the outside airlock, sealing everything else in and uh, heading out. June floats back down. Hello. Hi. Um, I think food was mentioned. Yes. If you'll come on up with me, I believe Chester is making noodles. She, but she gestures to the ladder. V very uh, obviously waiting for him to go first. Yes. Uh, he, he would take the hint and continue on up. Oh, hey, Kai. How was the shower? It's a little more human, I guess. It's a little still odd. Um, yeah, I imagine. Uh, you like uh, you like noodles? 
I like good noodles. I'd, I'd say that's a challenge, Chester. It's well, I mean, I, I'm not cooking them. I'm reheating them. It's from the... Uh, these are... So my... Well, one of my I, I like noodles a lot, and so I've got a subscription to the Ganymede Noodle Company. It wasn't you. Or what was it? Somebody it, was, it was Kai. It was Kai? Kai had, yes. Oh, Kai that's right. Kai had, had the, the subscription. noodle subscription. It's part of his thing. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's where the noodle subscription came from. I forgot. So, uh, I, these actually might be yours. Uh, I hope that you like this kind. Uh, it's the mushroom and tilapia noodle with the soy. I, I think it's actually pretty good. And he kind of hands a, the the packet. It says Ganymede Noodle Company on the side. Mm -hmm. GNC. I, I, I would, <laughs> would take it. Um... No, this one's not bad, I guess. There's some that are a little bit better. Yeah, we've been... I mean, we didn't... We've been eating some of these, and I I might be guilty for... You know, I like noodles a lot, so I've kind of been hitting these pretty hard. So sorry about that. Uh, I can offer you some desserts. He pulls up at his... his, uh, his one of the, the pockets on his coveralls. I'm still wearing coveralls? I am. Because I changed back into coveralls. I think. Did I change back into coveralls? I thought so. I think so. Yeah. I would, no, I would have had to. Still... I went into a space suit. Yes, I, I changed mm -hmm. back into coveralls. Um, and I, I think you had mentioned there's still a part of Chester that's like on ship yeah. equals coveralls. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah. But, we had but a whole June, teasing conversation about but it. But June <laughs> is a force to be reckoned with. Yes. And so. <laughs> um, and he pulls out his, his last... Uh, MCRN peach cobbler and hands it to him. These these are pretty good. <laughs> June gasps slightly <laughs> but hides it as best she can. The cherries are all gone, but the peaches are almost as good. Hopefully that makes up for me plowing into your noodle subscription a little bit there. Let me start with the noodles. We'll see how it goes. Um, Chester opens up another worry, packet of noodles. Don't worry about the noodles. I think if you save my life, the, the least I can do is, is share noodles. Oh, awesome. Chester opens up an egg and sriracha <laughs> noodle packet and just starts going to town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, you want uh, some? Uh, I did. <laughs> he, just, I he, just, he reaches in and grabs another noodle pack, looks at it, and throws it over you and it says it's beef and broccoli noodles uh, but it, the the beef and broccoli are both in quotes yeah uh thanks June just kind of sits down and she keeps her distance but is watching the the happenings mm -hmm. without actually watching uh, Kai, Kai starts much slower um going to, to eat his noodles um, you can tell it's the one of those situations where like he recognizes he probably needs to eat real food but there's mu probably not much of an appetite um, and so he's just sort of found himself here now um, so he, it's a little bit you know stirring it around in the container and then kind of picking at it a little bit mm -hmm. um, while, while he looks around So, Kai, um, you don't have any family you want us to contact or anything like that? June is acting like she's running through, you know, like absently going through her terminal when she's actually looking at the notes that she got from, uh, uh, oh my gosh, from Nigel. Oh, that's right. Chester like swallows like a huge ball of noodles in his mouth shouts up towards the bridge where he assumes Thomas is because Thomas is always on the bridge because Thomas likes the feeling of importance that he gets when he's sitting in the pilot seat Thomas you want to come meet our guest I can get you some noodles too I don't know you might have eaten more by the time I get down the ladder I mean uh, if you want me to Tom Thomas can stay Chester throws him a sriracha and egg one as well. 
uh, to, to answer uh, June's question, uh, Kai would sort of stop for a moment, uh, like he very actively just sort of stirring the noodles around in the, the, the cup. Um, not anybody that I'd need to, or that I'd be overly worried about. Um, I, I guess, how far away are we from Ganymede? June looks at Thomas expectantly. We're pretty much halfway from uh, Tycho to, to Ganymede by now. Um, Thomas would probably also at this point give a, a number in, in days, but I can't remember off the top of my right. head how many days. But yeah, but Thomas knows. But yeah, uh, but Canada does not. <laughs> yes, and and Kai would also even even the like being halfway between the two places. Uh, you know, would be enough for somebody that kind of knows the general, you know, layout of the system to figure it out. Um, well, if I've been out of commission as long as uh, you're telling me I have been, uh, I don't think a couple more days, a little more, a little longer, getting from the, here to there is gonna, you know, hurt anything. I doubt you'd be able to get in touch with anybody, anybody sooner, anyhow. June shrugs um, and she she keeps eating her noodles um, in looking through her notes she is aware uh, that there are absolutely no records of this man in the last six months mm -hmm. um, and so she is trying her best to figure out how to move forward with this conversation while also trying to get something out of him <laughs> that isn't just oh yeah i just bounced around places <laughs> i i would say still going back to your your 18 before uh, that that as you've asked him about family or contacting anybody the there's either information being withheld or he's being very careful about what he says. So you're, you're, he's, he's still like, you're, you're trying to get information and he's watching what he's saying, uh, without trying to appear that he's watching what he's saying, if that makes right. sense. Yeah. Um, and just for my own notes. So I have two different names because at one point mm -hmm. I, uh, I searched and it was K Tolan. Mm -hmm. um, and now I have a last name called Dardanus, mm -hmm. and I don't know which one you want to give him. Uh, I have an explanation for that. So, oh, oh. <laughs> well. to, to out of character, give you a hint if you were going to try to poke him. Um, right. it's, okay. You... it's okay. I'm not going to, I won't poke him right now because if you have an explanation for that, then it's fine. But you didn't have an explanation for K versus Kai, so I didn't know. <laughs> no, that, that was just my, my own inability to pronounce things properly. Uh, the, the last name there is an explanation for. Okay. She's... She's not going to push anything right now because she's already asked a couple of questions and so she's just going to go ahead and eat and just see what's going to happen. Jester wipes his mouth on the sleeve of his coveralls and uh, tosses tosses his uh, the the wrapping all the stuff into the into the recycler and goes, "So this is Thomas. He's our he's our pilot slash sometimes special ops person because he wants to be." Uh, June offhandedly goes, he's from Mars, too. I mean, obviously. we're All, all three of us are kind of taller than you, June. <laughs> that doesn't mean that you aren't a short belter, does it? Chester um, self-consciously grabs his head to see how big it is. <laughs> just as a uh, point of order, uh, is are of the three of you that are there with Kai, are any of you openly armed? Um, no, I don't. June didn't have her pistol. Chester okay. wouldn't have kept his pistol on him. I don't know about Thomas. Uh. Well, Thomas is, 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 has been itching to go and uh, arm himself. Uh, to be to be fair, but I don't think 
Okay. I, I don't think he, he is at this precise moment. Okay. That, that's just as a point of order for kind of the situation that Kai finds himself sitting in. Uh, right. <laughs> if, if Thomas comes floating down, you know, very obviously, you know, uh, with a, a pistol on his hip or something, uh, might might change how he tends to react. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But if not, then yeah. <clears throat> Uh, he, he's gotten probably about halfway through the noodles and he kind of, uh, it's not so much setting it down because there's no gravity, but just sort of kind of lets it hang in front of him. Uh, um, and is the, the universal symbol of, I've kind of, I, I think I've eaten enough. Uh, yes, I could, or should ask, um, we don't seem to be under underway at the moment. Is there something wrong with the ship? June perks up happily before anybody else can say anything and says, absolutely not. We're just stopped here for a little bit while our engineer and somebody else in our crew is getting System something done. System specialist. Yeah. I think that's what he should be called. Hmm. Yeah. So um, we just have, we just had a close encounter you remember how I mentioned that uh, we've had some run-ins with people who don't like us for reasons unexplained? I we blew them up. Recalled. They tried to blow us up first, though. Actually, this is the second time. This is true. We blew them up a little at first, and this time we blew them all the way up. June just <clears> kind <throat> of... Yeah, June just kind of... Uh, tilts her head slightly with a smile and goes, so, remember when we said that we found you and we got rid of all those drones? Mm -hmm. They were waiting for something that first time. Um, and we ran away. Did we know the ship was called the, the Wasp? To do. We knew the ship was called we, the Wasp, right? Uh, yes. I know, like, we did, but I wasn't sure if there was a, com a conversation. The ship was called I think, yes, in the character wasp. you would know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if that rings a bell to you. It. She was about the same size as this ship. Similar yes. performance. But go uh, ahead and roll another like intuition, perception, intuition. Who? I'm. Both, well, I am because uh, remember any, I said that the June is watching. That are there as part of the conversation. Yeah, this is part of June. Does this? She watches and she listens to everything. I am rolling great tonight or today. With six stunt points too. Wow. Yeah. Hang on, I gotta look at the characters, the social stunt stuff. Thomas is aware he is in a room. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah, not quite that easy. bad. Uh, let's see. Where is it? PDFs. So, I guess. So, with the stunt points, however, let's see. Since we're in a and we're we're in a social situation, mm -hmm. I can just use stunt points for for social stunts, kind of thing. Or is yeah. that something? Okay. Why is it? Hey. Anytime I type in in the search bar social, it goes to combat stunts. Type social stunts. Um, social Encounters Chapter 5. Ah, tabletop where you randomly stop the game to go look at the rules. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Uh, it looks like page 109. Yes. Which we can't show on stream because that would be cheating. Yes, 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 yes.
not a whole lot that actually works in this situation. Mm-hmm. Um, well, with six t- stunt points, I think what uh, what Chester would want is just to. I just want uh, Kai to at least feel some sort of, if not friendship, but some kind of camaraderie with with Chester because he's a guy. He likes noodles. He helped him. Mm-hmm. We're both from Mars. Uh, maybe even pity because Chester clearly has no social skills. Um, uh, and maybe, I don't know. Like, that, that, that's just, like, if, I, on a perception roll, though, like, I don't know. I guess, but yeah, that's, that's kind of how, if there's a way okay. to influence him to be, like, more friendly towards Chester, um, as Chester's just being himself. I'd say being goofy, but he's not being goofy. He's literally just being Chester. Right. Um, yeah. Cause I don't see anything specifically in the, in the flirt or the flirt, the social stunts. <laughs> uh, I, I will say uh, both uh, June and Chester, you would notice that when the, the wasp is mentioned, uh, like there is a bit of a reaction, um, but it's a brief one. Um, not, not like he, you know, goes bolt upright in his chair. Uh, but there, there's kind of a, a bit of a, a start, and then like he goes and grabs the the cup of noodles that was just floating there, and kind of goes back to idly, like picking at it a little bit to cover it up. Is there a Chester not being skilled in the art of mm-hmm. conversation sees it and immediately blurts out, "Got a history with them." June, June's um, eyes slowly roll back into the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's a pro- uh, like if they were a problem for you, they're they're not a problem anymore. I can tell you, thanks to our pilot here, and to some uh, interesting uh, manipulation of the torpedo system by our tech and our engineer. June looks at her good. noodles. June looks at her noodles and goes, sucker. <laughs> um, I'll just say that you're not going to find me upset that they're not on the float anymore. I don't think many people would be. They I mean, are a little bit jerk face-ish, if you know what I mean. Well, now they're technically still floating, but they don't have any faces anymore. Oh, that's kind of gruesome, isn't it? Well, I mean, it was quick. Hooray! Quick facelessness. Well, the, the, everything... Like, their fusion reactor blew up. There's nothing left of them. It's okay. We can move on. Chester goes down as if to eat more noodles, realizes he has no more noodles, and doesn't know what to do with his hands. He grabs a <laughs> bulb of water instead. Uh, while while this is is happening, uh, I'll jump back outside. Uh, Nigel, uh, you would have brought your mass of of cables and drone parts and uh, anything else that you brought with you, uh, and you would have arrived where uh, Rebecca has very obviously has a couple of modules out of a torpedo uh, that are floating there uh, and has started to kind of like jury rig some connections um, while waiting for you to to bring your part out. Um. So Nigel at this point would be um, working towards getting those connections hooked up and as doing so would be pulling up wads of cable and handing mm-hmm. them to the human lamppost next to us yep. and just just <laughs> continuously putting them in his hands until until the, there's a nice bundled cable mass yep. uh, in, in Carter's hands while he's holding light at the same time while I'm sure... Rebecca is telling him to make sure that he keeps the light on the target. Yeah. Um, some somehow he's finding a way to to keep up with it all. Uh, kind of has bunches of of cable tucked underneath one arm um, as as you hand him more. Um, and uh, um, you know, Rebecca would well actually go ahead and make a technology as you're kind of jury rigging this thing together uh do 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 
intelligence tech yet? Yeah. Yeah. And I have to figure out how to fit the connectors together, the, the round peg square hole sort of situation. Um, we use Nigel for one thing and one mm. thing only. <laughs> um, and you, you it'll, it'll take a little bit of time, uh, but you kind of, uh, between you and Rebecca, uh, you're able to get everything connected and, and uh, set. Uh, and then Rebecca would kind of look up at, at the two of you um, and give basically a, a shrug and just kind of over just to the three of you uh, direct local communication. That's about all I can do. So somebody's got to turn it on. Nigel's going to look around and look at Carter and go, I, I, I guess we turn it on. I guess it's time to plug it in. Yeah, you're, you're kind of down to that last connection that would connect the core to the frankly unholy you know abomination of technology and parts that this this data core is slowly amassing about itself <laughs> or what nigel calls tuesday yes yes it's tuesday <laughs> all right so nigel unceremoniously just plugs it in and flips the switch and and watches the monitor it, it goes through a boot cycle um, as it's attempting to come to grips with the, what it's been connected to. Uh, and it'll come back around to the, the Operation Dust Glass uh, screen. Um, and it would be indicating... Um, what would it be indicating? Um... It's still asking for... Uh, like an uh, essentially a, a net connection uh, to a larger database, and it recognizes it doesn't have that. Uh, but it has um, you could you could tell from the code that's scrolling across that it recognizes that it has access to uh, what did you give it sensors and I thought there was a couple of other things that you had Rebecca pull out. Welcome to the banana band. Uh, I think we we pulled. Sensors, we pulled communications, we didn't give it any mm. navigation, though. Okay. Uh, so I guess it does have communication, but very limited. So it would be yes. complaining, essentially complaining that it doesn't have access to the the amount of information that it wants. Um, but you can see that it's kind of actively, you know, pinging to... Uh, you know, establish connection to the ship and the, if there's any other other uh um you know anything else out there uh, that it can connect to but there's not a heck of a lot for it to to grab a hold of uh so you would essentially have a, a message coming across that's telling you that it's like performance will be reduced but it is recognizing that it has some capabilities that it didn't have access to before all right Nigel's going to key up the menu and, and see what we can get into instead of the demonstration mode. Um, it would recognize you would have a listing for uh, the the good news. Um, and it then kind of has, you could see that it's managed to connect to the ship enough to have uh, a breakdown of what the ship is capable of. Um, so essentially you have the stat block for the ship uh, that out of character that you have. Um, where it's listing off, you know, what, what you have. Um, but then it doesn't have a lot of other information uh, currently on anything, you know, um, any other ships at the moment because there aren't any others. But you, it, it would seem that if there was something else there that it could detect or that it could see, um, it might try to, you know, evaluate it and then kind of provide uh, what you've seen from the demonstration mode uh, of a more real-time analysis of what your ship is capable of and what, you know, anything else out there would be. Is it, does it have any information on the good news that we didn't already know? I don't believe so. Went through it pretty thoroughly. Um... 
No, I'm, I'm, I think it's, it's pretty much got everything, um, that you would be aware of. Okay. And it doesn't it's not like you're hiding a, a, a rail gun or something in there that you didn't know you had. Well, I mean, um, is there, does it have any information on details other than ship statistics? Any details about personnel? Uh, nope. Uh, it seems like it is, um, uh, that there is a listing for crew, but you would gather looking at it. And from when you've looked at the, the, the demonstration mode, or when you've been playing chess with it, um, that it's more a general rating of, uh, what to expect crew performance wise. Right. So, but there's not anything where it lists like names or you know anything like that. Uh, it just recognizes that a a good crew in an inferior ship can sometimes have an edge over an inferior crew in a superior ship. Uh, that the the crew makeup does impact the uh, the situation. There is, um, and when we're looking at the data here and we're looking at the good news, and you were noting that there is no information around anything else in the area there's no quite literally no information on leftover radioactive debris no no information on anything else just ship stats it would the what you would gather is it would want to take the ship that it's attached to and compare it to anything else in the immediate vicinity um and that there isn't currently anything to compare it to but you can see there is a section of the program uh, that if there were something there, or you could actually, uh, now that it's tied into the ship, you could actually pull some of the information out of its database and slot it in there artificially, and it would start to stack up, like, um, uh, how how the, the good news might compare to something else. It's Whopper. That's what it is. It's... It, uh, Nigel's looking at, the, at this thing going that's it that's it. it's it's a it's a dictionary <laughs> it's an intelligent dictionary but it's a dictionary well do you do you slot another some other class of ship in when you yes. recognize that you can do that uh, what 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 is it that you slot in to compare the good news to our recently vaporized friends Hmm, okay. Um, you point it back to the, uh, like the sensor logs, uh, and it, it takes a minute, you know, while it processes over the information that you picked up from it. Uh, but then it does display kind of unknown, um, well, no, it would put the wasp on there because you would have had that transponder information. Um, and then kind of listed off a similar stat block, um, and it, it would then run through and kind of kick out a report that your the two ships were physically very similar uh, in armament and, and what they were capable of doing. Um, and so it kind of would have then summarized down to, in an engagement, uh, it would come down to like positioning and crew. Um, if one ship got the element of surprise, like in a straight, you know, firefight, it would come down to kind of random chance. Uh, you know, a, a lucky torpedo getting through, lucky PDC, you know, or or something like that, uh, or essentially um, a a maneuver like what you pull off in order to get the drop on them is is how it would be resolved. Uh, but the the two of them compared together, it would be pretty pretty even uh, that it would recommend either like you know some reinforcements to get the edge or. Uh, tactical placement, you know, how, how, how the engagement is begun and, and, uh, the decisions that are made at that point, uh, it would give pretty even odds just looking at the ships to, uh, the engagement going either one way or the other without access to any more specific information. Okay. So Nigel is, is evaluating the response that it, it gave and, and is thinking about what this thing actually does and is thinking about what is it 
if, if, if we're in a situation now where it is looking for something still, do mm-hmm. we know anything more about what it's trying to connect to? It wants information. Um, like it is actively attempting to, uh, if you would gather that if there was other another ship out there that you could uh, uh, walk, you know, get a really good lock on on what it was, um, that it would try to feed that in uh, and, and analyze what the ship is capable of. Uh, or if it just had a really big database of information that it could draw on, um, that it, it would be providing you know, recommendations and, and uh, uh, a tactical analysis of those assets. Okay. Nigel is, is considering that and then goes back to the original scenario where it was comparing the, the former battle and looks back at the information and w- is wondering what it was the anticipated outcome of that engagement. Um... It would originally have given the Wasp an edge, given that they did kind of have the drop on you. Um, and then as things progressed, um, it, it kind of, it would have agreed that, that running was the appropriate course of action, uh, as you initially did. Um, and then like, it sort of analyzes the, the, the torpedo dump that you did, um, and and lists it off as uh, how would it describe that? Um, essentially, a highly unorthodox but obviously effective solution. Um, like it, it rates it as something that it wouldn't. If it were grading the maneuver, um, it would be real high on kind of the desperation scale. Um, and and pretty low on the this is a recommended course of action uh, tactic. Uh, it probably would have listed off like continuing to run, just break contact, uh, you know, as what it would normally recommend to do. But it obviously it can't argue with the results. So Nigel has a has an idea and goes to the good news of stat block mm-hmm. and adds. intelligence core with adaptive combat Mm -hmm. routines to the stat core does the block recalculate what the good news is capable of and recognize that it has been added to the ship stat block if if yes if you go back over and essentially uh kind of tell it you know the ch- changing up the the scenario that if it had been in the loop for that, uh, it kind of pushed the um, not crew efficiency, but the the crew rating. Uh, very suddenly, the good news got a boost. And does it process the recommendations it would have made in battle differently? looking at the the history of it um I'm trying to think of of the limits of what this thing can do um it wouldn't have changed any of its recommendations after the fact uh the, basically the recommendations it gave you just analyzing the engagement would have been the same recommendations that uh, it would have given in the moment. If okay. That makes sense. Yes. That it, it, would compare... have re- it would have recognized the physical capabilities of the two ships were very similar, um, and barring doing something crazy slash stupid slash inspired, um, as you did, um, that the it really could have gone either way. It essentially would have come down to kind of dumb luck. Um, you know, a single so... torpedo getting through that the PDCs couldn't account for or something like that. Okay. So with the increased stats, with the good news, with the data core attached to the ship, it would have made the same recommendations had it had the stat blocks prior and the stat blocks after that change. It, 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 its response did not, did not differ. Yeah. Given the information that it has access to, 
Um, there's not anything that it can see in the moment before you pulled your torpedo maneuver uh, that would have changed things significantly. You know, because it, it, it would have recognized j just having it attached would have given you an edge, um, but it, it there's would have been too many variables to go back and account for um, anything it, specific it might have recommended doing. But okay. it recognizes that there could have been something there uh, that it picked up on that you guys missed or, or something like that. Um, right. So it's, it's smart enough to kind of know it has its own limitations, if that makes sense. Yes. Okay. Um, Nigel uh, taps off the comm to the rest of the team and says, and, and asks to the, to the group, um, it's Thomas there? Yep. Do you ever remember training against a, a you know, a simulation of any kind? Well, we did you used to run Sims, yeah. Uh, would you? I, I feel you're leading up to a, a bigger question. Would you have ever have trained with one that would have learned from your actions? Um, possibly. Uh, to be fair, that setting the Sims was more the. Um, sort of chiefs of staff of whatever flotilla we're in, flag officers, um, flag lieutenants, they, they'll be the ones who handle nuts and bolts. But the Sims did change um, over time, obviously. But whether or not that was down to, you know, mandrolically somebody doing it or uh, it learning by itself, I couldn't give you a definitive answer. Okay. Well, I think. Nigel thinks that we might have a intelligence computer, one that can pretty instantly read anybody's ship stats, combat capabilities, and project simulations on what the results of that particular engagement might look like in maybe a few nanoseconds. As these comms were over the entire ship, um, oh yeah, that she, was speakerphone. Yeah, she's. She's watching very intently the reactions of Kai. Oh, he's interested. You can tell that going back to your your role from before. So well, I can't say I'm surprised. In in a sense that something like that exists. I'm surprised we found it, but well, that doesn't sound like it's going to try and take over the ship, though. So that's nice. I, I agree with our duster pastor here. I think we can take this thing back inside. What do you think, Nigel? Should we plug it in? Well, if we plug it in, we might find out what else is out there. Or if we run into something new, we can find out what it's about before they know what we're about. Chester looks at June questioningly, then remembers that Kai's June, in the room. Yeah, June looks. <laughs> June gives a side glance to um, <laughs> to Chester as he, when he looks at her, then looks. Oh, well, excuse you, <laughs> the baby just belched. I don't know if you could. Hear that. Um, but she she looks back at uh, Kai and goes, "What do you think, Kai? Should we plug it in?" what in I don't know what do you think it is they said pretty obviously that it was a computer that learned very quickly do you have any idea what it is I mean if you found something um let's see I mean, if you have a piece of hardware that makes your ship better at what it does, uh, it's kind of hard to turn something like that down. 
especially hmm. if you've got people out there that are wanting to shoot at you. Well, we don't anymore, do we? Fair point. June is going to roll deception. Um, and she's she's going to she's going to basically play this off as I have no idea what it is that they what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a I have a general idea, but um, but I don't I don't know much about it. And all I all I know is that um, is that we have been shot at. This thing mm-hmm. has that has the capability of being, uh, you know, of being dangerous. But I genu I genuinely want your opinion. You were here before we were. You know the ship better than we do, and you know better the cargo you were carrying. And so she's going to roll and see if he buys that. Okay. (laughs) I will tell you from his responses, uh, as you've asked the question, like you were pretty sure before that there was more, like he knew more than what he was saying, but there was always kind of a reasonable explanation for it. Um, you know, when, when you start asking about personal information or, or, you know, possible connections to illegal activity, it makes sense that he may not want to immediately blurt out that he may or may not have known what was in him. Uh, and at this point, as he's trying to pass off that he doesn't know what you're talking about, June, you can absolutely tell that he is lying. Uh-huh. Um, uh, it's, it's, yeah. Um, So June, June listens to him and she she doesn't care whether or not the other two pick up on it because um, she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna get to the bottom of it eventually. Mm. but she gives she gives both Thomas and Chester at this point they know her well enough that if she gets a certain look in her eyes, you do not interrupt her in this conversation she's having with somebody because she knows something you don't know. <laughs> um, she uh, she gives like this slight gesture with one of her hands. It comes up to her to her face and she kind of like absently brushes at a hair near her ear and it's just kind of like a, like a light flick um, as she's talking. Um, and she, and she, uh, she goes, so in all, uh, you mentioned that you, you moved boxes around, um, and that's what you were supposed to do. You don't, you don't think that they could have found something in those boxes, do you? I mean, I wasn't around. I mean, like I said, I don't think what was in them was what they were labeled as, but... Wow, you don't have that much curiosity that I would have died. I would have I would have tried to open that. I don't know how much interaction you have with certain elements out here on the belt, but a- asking questions and being curious will absolutely get you dead. Sometimes, not if you're quick about it. You seem pretty quick. Chester is watching the conversation, mostly Kai. <clears throat> Cuz he's just got a funny feeling. Uh, Thomas, having finished his noodles, is going to casually slip back to his uh, cabin for a few moments and retrieve his sidearm. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. I I love how... Even without the little gesture that June does to alert her crewmates, they all go, oh, June's getting scary. We should go uh-huh. do something. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think things could go sideways real quick. Uh, I will note, mm-hmm. I think we are at about the halfway point, so I don't know yep. if we wanted to take a quick break as we're we're deciding, you know, how, how much Kai may or may not know. Um, can I do something, please? True. In that, in that one little, you seem pretty quick. 
I want to use the flirt. Okay. Mm, okay. So Are you gonna make him stupid? <laughs> so this roll roll communication seduction, but I don't have seduction, which is fine. Um target your Not target's yet, you don't. willpower, so you have to do self discipline. Um, as a simple social role against a character whose attitude towards you is open or better with a positive bent, if you win, they become enamored with your character, opening the door for future romance or intimacy. How this proceeds is up to you and the GM to work out together. But she is going to flirt to see if she can at least unbalance him a little bit and and get him a little bit more on her side. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. I'm rolling a willpower. Willpower. If he has self-discipline. Uh, poor Kai. <laughs> uh, he is not rolling well. Um, I will. I will tell you that right now. I mean, would you roll well with Jewel and June around? I know I wouldn't. I mean, that's what the dice decide. Um, Matt used up my stunt points from. Why am I? Why am I sitting here under that bit in hot furs? Where uh, you know, did you see what I did there? Yeah, you hypnotized him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we can see what the what the effects of that are mm-hmm. after the break. But haha. <laughs> okay, that will work. Uh, Nab is back. I think we are all returned now. Indeed. All right, I'm going to turn off the intermission screen that was very carefully and expertly crafted over many, many days. <laughs> All right, and we're back. We went a long way. It's been a long road getting from there to here. Mm-hmm. It's been a long time, but our game is finally near. All right, so June's flirting. Chester's watching. Thomas is getting ready to start shooting. <laughs> Carter, Rebecca, and Nigel are floating. Yeah. Uh, so, so Kai would um, be sitting there, and and at this point, it's very much a conversation between him and June. Uh, like he probably hasn't even necessarily realized that Thomas has stepped away. Um, June has that effect on people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she she keeps eye con- she gets your eye contact and she keeps it. <laughs> Yeah, and and you can tell. I'm trying to think uh, exactly how to describe this. Uh, just continuing the the that Kai is aware that he's watching what he's saying, uh, and that he's picking up the fact that June probably has either knows something or has a really good hunch about something uh, that's driving her comments. Uh, so he will just kind of stick the fork back in the the noodle cup um, and then go to just sort of, you know, let it hang in front of him. I get the feeling that there's something specific that you want to ask. So instead of just dancing around it, why don't we go ahead and you ask me? Oh, sure. That sounds lovely. I was hoping we'd do that. She she does almost exactly what he did with her cup of noodles and mm-hmm. just looks at him pleasantly and says, So we already asked you if you found anything in those boxes. Would you like to answer that question honestly now? You can't pin this on me, buddy. Chester's just watching some noodles starting to drift out of the cup. The cups. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a slightly sad expression on his face. Like, oh, wasted noodles. <laughs> um, <laughs> without, without, like, she doesn't even break her eye contact mm-hmm. with Kai, and she goes, they haven't touched the floor, Chester. 
And if they did, that's second rule. <laughs> Chester just kind of reddens a little bit and starts paying attention again. Kai, Kai would sort of unconsciously take th and, and just sort of shove the, the cup of noodles in your direction um, from where it's been floating. Um, Chester catches it and starts eating it. <laughs> <laughs> well, finding something in one of them would require that I was looking for something. Ah, uh, so we want to play that way. So... Did you happen to place something in one of those boxes? Hoping that we wouldn't find there, it. No. Ah, okay. You're being so smart about this. And she just kind of <sighs> chuckles a little bit. And she goes, You're the one who says we should just get it all out there, right? How about you go ahead and do that? At this point, he looks from uh, uh, you know June over to to Chester Thomas. At this point, if like all you were doing was going to kind of collect a sidearm and then bring it back, yep, uh, you would be have had plenty of time at this point if you wanted to be coming back in. Uh, the again, the question okay. I have is: Are you obviously displaying, uh, or did you kind of tuck it into the jumpsuit so you have it, but you're attempting to conceal it, or you just oh, kind of clip I, it I to your it belt inside so my just, jacket? Okay. Uh, so would look at shoulder holster style at all three of you, um, and then kind of give a look to whatever terminal uh, that, that Nigel's voice came out of. <clears throat> look, I'm well aware that. You could pretty much shove me out of an airlock anytime you wanted to. Um, and that you haven't done that, and I'm grateful, and you patched me up. I'm also grateful for that. But, and then he gives, uh, I think it would be Chester, uh, a, a um, pretty solid level look. But I'm sure you understand that there are times where other obligations take hold. Other obligations that you are considered dead about? <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to fill me in. I'm I'm not making the the leap the uh -huh. the connection there to the comment. So, no, that was, sorry, that was me out of character, not comment. Sure. So, uh, basically, it's, sh you're, everybody thinks you're dead. Mm -hmm. You don't have any obligations anymore. Um, there, what okay. obligation could follow you beyond the grave at this point? Well, um, I'm not dead. So, there are obligations that I have. And I can tell you that you are all on the edge, as you might gather, of something a heck of a lot bigger than one ship. Oh yes, we gathered that for sure. Well, we it's hoping... smaller now because it was two ships and now it's it's one ship again. Well, we are hoping that you would fill us in on some more of that, but it doesn't seem like Welcome you really to want the banana to. band. Want to and can are two totally different things. I mean, you have a mouth. Right. At this point, she's not smiling. What if... We can say nothing here is going to leave this room as long as it's not going to follow us anywhere. There's a lot of questions we have about our ship. The cargo it was carrying, the people that are after it, the abomination that Nigel's put together with the chessboards and the drones. We want to know what's going on with regards to the ship. We want to know if there are more people coming after us. Chester says with his mouth full of noodles. Act 
actively coming after you? That I honestly don't know. Just if... If we show up at the wrong port, somebody recognizes our ship. Are they going to be angry with us because we happen to be in this ship? Depends on if they recognize it. So, but... yes. June, at this point, actively breaks eye contact and starts absently picking at her nails and goes, You know, I don't feel comfortable going to Ganymede and letting you off at this point. Chester his head whips around and looks at June with like a what are you suggesting look on his face. I mean, that's fair. And I, I believe me, I'm sympathetic to the position that you're in. But And he, he stops for a second, and you can see he's actively attempting to roll things around in his head at this point. <clears throat> We're not your enemy, Kai. Not yet. I'm not your enemy, Kai. I just... I'm... We're as caught up in this as you are. Different ways, but it seems to me that you signed up for whatever has happened. I'm not saying that you and your crew deserved... What happened? Because I don't think anybody deserves that. But I know that... I know that you know that... Complicated things... And getting mixed up, mixed up in stuff that's so big... You don't... We're worried. And pe when people are worried... Or scared... They do stupid things. He looks over at Thomas's head peeking through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I should I should have probably mentioned too that um, she is making sure that this is being broadcast out to the people in mm -hmm. space. Yeah. I, my my assumption was the the call was open and it's never been closed. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> Uh, I, I would oh, say so we got a space probably, Carter like, probably would have said something at this point, but yeah. he's not here. Carter would have been like, <laughs> so he probably looks like he's about ready to come back in the ship and yeah, probably. You know, gra grab a rifle and take care of business. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to make that decision. Um, yeah. Well, he he tripped on all the cables and then yeah. he just calm. <laughs> he's just uh. tangled out there in the black. Mm -hmm. He's just you're just hearing this low stream of belter invective as Carter's trying to untangle himself <laughs> from all these cables that Nigel's brought out that he's starting to, sub to sub suspect that Nigel didn't need to bring all the cables out he just brought mm -hmm. it out because he thought it looked cool yeah um um June um like extends her hand and inspects her fingernails and just goes <sighs> I was really hoping that this wouldn't be the problem that we were going to have I was I was thinking that you were a pretty likable person I don't I understand that you don't want to tell us what's happening I get that however if you don't tell us what's happening we can't trust you and if we can't trust you I'm afraid you are a prisoner we can't really let you go if we don't know what you're going to do and we don't know anything more about what you were doing beforehand. I know that you don't have any records in any system that I've been able to find at all for the past six months, which tells me that you do know what you were doing on this ship beforehand. So to not tell us about it, even though everybody else thinks you're dead, you have nothing to lose at this point except for your freedom, for sure. Well... Can you just tell us why the ship was carrying so much Martian gear? Is this a Martian ship? Is this some kind of black ops thing that we've stepped in and now we're just royally and totally screwed? Or is it some kind of black market thing? I don't care who. I don't care who's buying. I don't care who's selling. But just a little bit of context. 
is all I'm looking for. And I think maybe, he looks at June and Thomas, maybe we can come to some kind of arrangement where nobody knows where you are or who you are, and we just go our separate ways and pretend we never met each other. June suddenly smiles graciously, claps her hands like a little girl and goes, I do love bargains. She's going to be the one negotiating, so you're going to want to think very diff- very long and hard about what uh, what you bring to the table. I don't think we're making an unreasonable request. I think we're just, we just want to know. And I'm just tired of people trying to kill me. There's that. There's that. Eventually, we're going to not be able to dodge the bullet. It'd be nice to know if we could see the guns aiming at us before the, they fire. I, I would look at all three of you. Um, and then again, looking more at uh, 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 Chester and, and Thomas, going, well, oh, the two of you, I'm sure... understand what it means to swear an oath to something bigger than yourself. Chester nods. And, like, you can see his posture has shifted some, uh, or before he was kind of, of you know, slouched over, and, not slouched over, but um, attempting to come across a little more relaxed. That he shifted to more uh, like what you would be accustomed to seeing uh, somebody aboard an MCRN uh, vessel, you know, even when they're kind of off-duty. Um... Uh, Back's a little bit straighter, you know, he's, he's, yeah. Oh, no. And if I do tell you what you're asking me to tell you, I'm liable to end up just as without freedom as you've described, or dead, for violating that oath. But is a Martian you ship, have a point. It? We're here now. And I do very much recognize that I owe quite literally my life to you. So please understand there are still some things that I can't say. And like he looks at June when he says that. And that I have very good reasons for saying that. Or for withholding that information. But you were correct that this ship was more than it appeared to be. Chester just closes his eyes. <laughs> to directly answer your question about why it was carrying the gear that it was, for the most part, that was cover. The actual cargo is what I gather you have outside right now, and then that you're thinking about plugging into the ship. Is that a bad idea? Full circle. I'm not asking you what it is. Not. I'm not asking you what it's for. Directly. Like, it's not going to take over the ship or overload the reactor or anything like that. Or whistle down a Martian patrol on us saying, help, help, I'm being repressed. Not directly, no. Okay. But if it manages to make contact with one, they might recognize that there's more to this ship than meets the eye as well. They may not know exactly what that means because there's very few people that do. I'm suddenly but very they will glad. recognize that the ship has something that they probably want to know about. All right. Well... And would you want them to find you? Frankly? Yes. Great! 
We're not plugging you then, boys. And she stands up and goes over to the sink and washes her hands and says, Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Um, Kai, do you mind uh, waiting a couple decks down or something so we can talk for a moment? I have a... I want to make you an offer, but I need to talk to the rest of the crew first. Because I can't make it unilaterally. I just sort of gestures with that. I don't really have a choice. You always have a choice. She she kind of looks at him like, yeah, you have a choice and I dare you to make it. And then just kind of moves <sighs> up to the to the next level. Coming, Chester. Chester's kind of goofy, sad, goofy, fun expression that he's been wearing is has been replaced with something a little more sad. And he floats up to the bridge. Thomas, you should come too, and then we'll loop in the guys outside. Chester closes the door underneath. So clearly, this is some kind of Martian operation that we stumbled into. So, June takes care of the comms routing. It's going through mm-hmm. suits and only to like her her little Pacific. portable thing. Yeah, so that yeah. so that they only the people upstairs can gather around this little thing and then the others outside can hear. Mm-hmm. So here's my thought. We give Kai that core, which is whatever it's it's supposed to be somewhere. We take him where he needs to go and we let him finish whatever his mission is and then we just forget the whole thing happened. I this feel is like really easy. I feel like this is really, really easy for you to say because you're a Martian. I'm the only Earther here. What does that have what is it that is in there? There have been uh alliance or whatever what is that what is the word for the the earth is the unn unn yeah, yeah. UNN. so there's there have been unn things going on there have been martian things going back and forth as far as i know this is something that is very beneficial to martians I thought you couldn't wait to get off of Earth, June. That doesn't mean that I am not proud to be from Earth. I don't. But why then? Thanks, Thomas. I like you very much. (laughs) She looks at Chester. I don't think this is something that is going to change the world for one way or another. If they have one of these, they have more than one. I'm just thinking that We send him on his way. Someone who's supposed to be somewhere gets there. Mars gets their property back. We don't become wanted criminals across the entire system. And everything is happy. Or at least... At least isn't a disaster. Everything is happy. Everything is not a disaster. Except for the people who would possibly be killed by this guy being released with this thing. And somebody else picking him up and going, oh yeah, thanks. Now we can go forward with our plan to kill these people. And Mars, every single death, it June, would feel like June. I let that happen. What? Mars is not the aggressor here. How do you How do you figure that? This is a very obviously militaristic thing. Trying to figure out the best way possible to get through... Do you know why things. Mars has a military? Do you know why? Because of Earth. Because Earth tried to keep us under their heel. You know this. You've watched the vids. You've seen the news. You know history. Yes. Thank you. Mars is not interested in conquering Earth. Frankly, Mars can't conquer Earth. It has nothing to do with conquering. Mars doesn't care what Earth does, as long as Earth leaves Mars alone. If Earth continues to leave Mars alone, nothing in that ball could possibly hurt anyone. I know things are tense right now, and that's probably why this thing's moving. I mean, with Eros doing what Eros did, I get it. Everybody's a little nervous and weird, especially at higher levels. 
we are not the higher level. We are the bug that will get crushed or the bug that flies away and lives out its life in relative peace. Those are our choices. I don't want anyone to die. Anyone else to die. I don't want a war started. I also don't want to take something away from my people that belongs to my people. And I think Thomas feels at least somewhat the same way, although I'm sure he just wants to plug it in and use it. Looking at Thomas. Thomas is sort of still processing the, the whole, you know, Mars is the aggressor thing and looking very displeased. I'm not saying Mars is innocent of everything, but neither is Earth. I didn't say we were. This is not the conversation we came up here to have. I want to know if we can send a man, an honorable man, who has been as open with us as he can be, after some persuasion, on his way to finish his mission to be with his people and probably able to go see whoever his family is after that. Or as if we just drop him somewhere, who knows what's going to happen to him. I want to offer to take him to some place where he can get to where he needs to be. I'm not saying we take, we. I'm not saying we go fly to Mars, land the ship and go, hey, we found this. Do you want it back? Because Honestly, I kind of like being on this ship, and I feel like if we do that, we're not going to keep the ship. So you don't Callisto. think... You don't think that Kai is just going to turn us into whoever it is? What the motivation ship? does he have to do that? I don't know. I just met him. He was hiding things from us initially. He's, He's still undercover. hiding things from us. I... Hey, Belters, do you have anything to say? You inners got issues. And I just got <sighs> I pop in and, and, and say at the same time that he, he thinks we should keep it. We should keep the data core. That is such a bad idea. And then start searching the data core for mission profiles. June, you and Carter are the ones who have ostensibly been in command. And honestly, June, you're the one who's been making most of the decisions that have turned out well. I trust your decision-making capability. I trust your motivations. I don't know... I don't know if this is a decision that you can make without being tinged by your background. I'm not trying to call you a bigot. I'm not trying to call you anything like that, but we all have prejudices, and I know you feel alone on this ship. Like, you... Throughout this whole thing, she's been trying to be open about her emotions, and she's only holding back a little bit, but you can start to see tears welling up in her eyes. And she's angry, but there's, but she's upset enough that she's starting to cry. Look, I don't want you to think that I think anybody here is personally drawn up into any of this. I don't think any individual is in cahoots with any one, one government or the other. I don't want anybody thinking that I have prejudice as far as that goes. I think you all are great people and I've enjoyed working with you. But I don't know him. And all I know... Hello, kitty. All I know is that this man is working for 
for Mars in in a in a huge he has the opportunity to do huge awful things and I don't know what they are and if I let him go without anything else I feel like any bad thing that will happen to anyone else will be my fault especially because you treat me as the captain and I never wanted any of that she collects herself, shakes her head, and she goes, We can't make a decision about this anyway right now. We're still days away from Ganymede. I think we just need to watch. We need to keep him as a friend as much as possible. I will be gracious and lovely. But we can't make a decision one way or the other anyway. Let's see what's un what unfolds in the next couple days. And we'll make a decision then. And she shuts, she shuts off like her, she is done. There's no more conversation to be had with June right now. So you don't want to give it to him, even if we just drop him on Ganymede? Not without any more information. If we if we were at Ganymede right now, and we and you asked me that, I would say absolutely not. He'd be staying on the ship. I'm gonna go talk to him. Jester opens the door and just dives down. Is Kai still in the galley? <laughs> he'd he'd okay. be over. He's probably. Uh, like not actively looking through the food stores, but just the sort sort of I have nothing better to do, holding the fridge open, kind of thing. Um, right. But he he would hear the door open. He'd turn around and and look at you. Hey, Kai. Uh, so some members of the crew feel uncomfortable with the potential of what's in the little the little football. And if it were up to me, I want to just give it to you and send you on your way. But we don't know what it's for. And I understand you probably can't tell me what it's for. But I know our, our lovely Earther, who's been chatting with you, who's basically our captain. It's fuzzy. Don't. It. Anyway, complicated. She's terrified that it's going to somehow do irreparable damage to many people. I don't believe that. I don't believe Mars is running around with offensive plans. That's never been my experience. We've always been a... We'll act first if we feel threatened, but we're not the aggressor, right? So... Is there anything else you can tell me without violating your oath that can help me help June feel better about this? One Martian to another. Go ahead and roll a... What would that be? Like a per communication persuasion? Uh, I mean, communication definitely. and that's, I don't have any focuses, so I'm going to hit okay. that. Oh, man! Y you can see, like, when you came down... You, uh, by the way, oh. wait, wait, wait. Because you have stunt points. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I had used the stunt points already, just as a... So, how? So just to be clear, um, I think, just to kind of establish a baseline, if there's not a stunt that fits and you have a bunch of stunt points, we can be like, hey, can I, can I make this... Ha can mm -hmm. I affect it this way? And as long as the GM, as long as Squirrel agrees, that's the use of the stunt points. And that, and the use I had earlier was to give him some kind of positive bond with me. Not necessarily mm -hmm. we're buddies but or whatever. Sure, but you just got six more. I know. I'm looking mm -hmm. right now. So, there's a stunt point called from the heart. I was just about to say <laughs> that. Yes, and I think you should use it. So, 
I don't know what the willpower focuses are. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I just, I want him to feel how emphatic I am about this, and I want mm -hmm. him to know I am telling the truth. We're okay. not planning to kill him. We have nothing, we have nothing against him personally. We just have some people who are concerned. And I I want to help him get back to where he needs to be, because that's, yeah. you know, at, at the core of that, that's where Chester's looking for where he's supposed to be, where he needs mm -hmm. to be. And he feels like that Kai knows where he needs to be, and he wants to help him get back there. Uh, when when you first came down, Kai was still... He shifted now more into... Uh, you, you gather that regardless of what his record might have indicated, uh, he's probably stayed in the MCRN a lot more than public record might show. I'm um, guessing he's still in the MCRN. Yes. Um... <laughs> And so when when you first came down, he was still in that. Um, I, I'd say at some point in in uh, Chester's history, he would have dealt with uh, somebody within the MCRN that was uh, brigged for one reason or another. Yeah. Um, and he was like needed to provide, you know, some medical attention or was involved. And so he kind of had that. Kai kind of had that. Um, he knows his back is against a wall um, and still like he's falling back on the the, the military training you know, right? Uh, as part of his identity and then as you come down and, and you lay this out you can see he kind of he doesn't deflate totally um, but there, there's a little bit of a relaxation Look, you know as well as I do that every Martian grows up. I guess I can't say every, but the, Mar the folks that I know, we want nothing more than the opportunity to turn Mars into the paradise, the world that it could be. Yeah. The Eden that earth used that to be data core and help with that I can't pretend to tell you that whoever's hands it's in that people won't wouldn't get hurt I think you're a realist enough to yeah understand that but the intention it's not a weapon right it looks like it, it would allow us to use the resources we have more efficiently and that that's I, it's a force multiplier i i can't say anything i understand more than that i understand If I can't convince her to give it to you, is it almost as good if it if it's destroyed? To know that it won't fall into Earther hands or Belter hands? I'm trying to find a way out for the for this crew, for this ship. Find a way that doesn't give us too many strings attached. And I'm trying to find a way that keeps you somewhere that you can move on with your life. I know what high-level failures can do to people in the MCRN. I've seen it. I've read about it. Our culture is not forgiving of people they consider to be losers, regardless of the situation. And I'm trying to find a path forward for all of us here. The only problem with that is whether the people that would make those decisions 
would believe that it's been destroyed. I see. I could tell them. Right. They might believe me. Well, I'm not sure we're going to be able to make a specific decision here. But I think our options are we send you with it when we get to Ganymede. If we can convince June that that's okay. If we convince the rest of the crew that that's okay. Or we destroy it. I don't, I don't think there's any way it stays on this ship. Regardless of what our tech boy wants to play with. But I just, like I said, I just want to find a way forward. Maybe we should just start moving now. <sighs> You're not a prisoner. I don't, I don't think you... I don't think you're here to hurt us. I don't think you have plans to hurt us. As far as I'm concerned, you're just a passenger on the ship at this point. Sorry about the noodles. There's an unconscious, uh, like, involuntary tug at, you know, the, the corner of his mouth. Um, about that. that. In all of this, that's, that's what... Chester is apologizing for. Chester's uh, apologizing for so much. He's just not, yes. he's not a people person. <laughs> and he really is embarrassed about eating all of this guy's noodles, even though it was probably just part of a cover story. <laughs> hmm. His obsession with filter anime might not be a cover, though. Throw him out the airlock. <laughs> <laughs> so, only solution. Chester, like, looks his head up. He goes, hey, Thomas, you want to call call our friends back inside and see if we get back underway again? I think that June might be right here. We need to... We need some time to make this decision. But... Roger that. I mean, you know my vote. June, I think you and I need to have a conversation at some point, because there's, there's a couple other options here that we can talk about. But I understand if you need some time right now. He's still got like a quarter pack of noodles in his hand and mm -hmm. he's looking down at it and is for the first time in living memory, not hungry. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, Kai would reach into the pocket where he put his terminal and he's, you know, he ba basically is going to hand it to to Chester. Uh, and so kind of while while it's extended, there's well, a couple of things that would happen. Uh, one, Thomas, since you had this the ship kind of keeping an eye out for things anyway, uh, would get a basically a ping that the ship has detected that there's something headed in your direction. Uh, and then Nigel uh, would get a notification on the, the drone amalgamation uh, of um, basically a contact being added to the active uh, database. And I think we're probably going to leave things off a little bit early this week. That's a good uh, spot, yeah. Because as um, uh, I think it would probably be the data core figuring it out first uh, that the, the vessel that's been detected is the MCRN uh, Amphion uh, a Morgana class, uh, what do they call that? Patrol destroyer. Oh no! <laughs> has entered into detection range. So that that's kind of Kai is is holding, you know, his communicator out, sort of with the. He he's doing it as an olive branch that like if I don't have it, I can't use it to like mess with you, kind of thing. Uh, as then Thomas, you get a ping that there's something out there, and then Nigel, you're getting the the same information, and the drone is is gathering what it is, uh, and then feeding the information in. Uh, I'd say between Thomas and Nigel, you'd be aware that it's not like right on top of you, 
Um, it's still a little ways out. Uh, but if you can detect it, you're relatively certain that they can detect you. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. So, there we go. Bit, bit of a cliffhanger. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 Yeah. Oh, man, that was cool. There was yeah. acting and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Welcome um, to the Banana Band. Thank you for the follow, Chappy276. This uh, will be continued in two weeks, provided we're all available. And I think we will be um, right here on this Twitch channel. Uh, if you like this content, please, please, please check out the YouTube channel, which I pressed twice by accident. Check it out twice then. Haha. <laughs> And uh, we've got some more story-based content on there. We back up these VODs over to the YouTube as well. Uh, you can find the rest of this series from the beginning over there. It's called Defy the Stars. Um, as always, Squirrel, thank you so much for the preparation and the work you do into building these worlds for us to play in and break. And, uh, That's what they're for. Yes. <laughs> and uh, thanks for your time, Kander, and Final, and Nabarine. I mean, Nab and I have... You know, no time, but we choose to spend no time here. And uh, this is a lot of fun, and I love doing this. And we look forward to having Scarlet back next week so he can have his uh, Boston Belter being snippy again. Because <laughs> I definitely missed it today. I definitely missed him being here for this one. I really feel like Carter would have had some pointed things to say a couple yeah. of times. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's too bad he was tied up. Yeah, I was all tied up. <laughs> Thanks, Grinny. <laughs> <laughs>